So we're doing a really fun global peace tribe pre-record right now. I'm with Rev Deb, who of course is with us live, but she's also right in this moment doing this pre-record uh, from her home in Mexico. And we've got Laura and Emmanuel, who have been shepherding the Holo movement from the very, very beginning. So I'm going to turn it over to Rev Deb to introduce Laura and Emmanuel and ask some key questions. Thank you, Scott. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be doing this program about the Holo movement since we just came off of this uh, marvelous gathering called the Ibiza Wave in Spain, and uh, Emmanuel and Laura are still there soaking up the wonderful uh, frequencies of Ibiza. And, uh, and these are two extraordinary people. They've been doing uh, such beautiful work through the organizations that they've founded, Green Heart and Purpose Earth, and uh, this dream of the Holo movement has really come through them, in addition to all the people, all the extraordinary people that they brought on board to help manifest it. And as many of you know, we, we did an event together last year in Sedona to ignite the Holo movement. And Scott, you were there for that one. And this year's event uh, just concluded in Ibiza, Spain, which is a magical place already. And it's even more magical now that it has the Holo movement vibe <laughs> permeating it. So I'd like to start with Emmanuel, he is, um, what, what is the title that you like to use now, Emmanuel? The visioneer of the Holo movement. That's that was it. good. That's good. it. So a lot of people who are with us this evening uh, know about the Holo movement, but there are probably a lot of people also who are hearing about it for the first time. So can you give us a little bit of a refresher as to what the vision for the Holo Movement is. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, very grateful for the opportunity to share the news about the Holo Movement with your audience. The Holo Movement is a term that was originally coined by American physicist David Bohm uh, in his book that was published in 1980 called Wholeness in the Implicate Order. And Baum was a firm believer in the oneness of everything. And uh, certainly the physicist who promoted the idea of a non-dual reality. Baum uh, explained that obviously some things look very separate and different. And certainly the consciousness we're using for this discussion today seems quite distinct from the uh, tables in front of us and the physical objects around us. But Bohm said it is all one and it's all together. He called the source consciousness that gave rise to the universe, the implicate order, and the manifest reality that we see before our eyes as the explicate order. But he said, they are all woven together by an unbroken wholeness. And that weaving of the implicate and explicate, he called the Holo Movement. Uh, when I came, first came across that term back in the 1980s, I was already on a quest to help facilitate a coming together of humanity, a sharing of resources and ideas in any way possible to address the needs and challenges of our society today. And I'd always been looking for the most appropriate term to describe this unbounded flowing oneness of humanity. So when I came across David Bohm's term, I said, aha, that's it. It took me another few decades to really make all of that coalesce and be ready to launch or ignite the whole movement as we did uh, last year, Deborah and Sedona together. But the term comes from, from that and it signifies the weaving together 
of implicate and explicate into oneness. Um, and the idea now is to apply this term, which it really comes from quantum physics and has recently been validated by the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2022, was giving to three, given to three physicists who really spent their lives uh, validating Bohm's theory of physics, which requires the concept of non-locality, the instantaneous instantaneous connectedness of everything in the universe beyond the speed of light, beyond space and time. When Bohm first proposed that theory in 1952, uh, his colleague Albert Einstein was a bit skeptical, uh, having proposed his theory of relativity that was widely expect, uh, accepted. But again, uh, Einstein didn't think anything could travel beyond the speed of light. And Bohm's theory says, yes, indeed, it's all instantaneously connected in a vast web of oneness. Uh, today, due to this uh, recent Nobel Prize for Physics, uh, 70 years later, uh, Bohm's theory is now being widely accepted in the world of physics. But as I said, this is also an application beyond physics. And in this sense, more of a sociological branding for a movement of movements that unites all the good work and moving forward of so many organizations and entities uh, today to really take on the issues uh, endangering our species and our civilization today and trying to find solutions um, to these challenges. And Bohm himself uh, was very interested in the sociological context of this as well. And in his later life, he uh, had lengthy dialogues with Krishnamurti, and they discussed the nature of consciousness in depth. He was also a good friend of the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama referred to David Bohm as his scientific guru, and Bohm himself developed and wrote books on creativity and dialogue uh, to find a way for people to really come together talk about this and find common ground uh, in resolving the challenges we face. So we're quite sure that Bohm himself would approve of the whole movement name as a branding for the sociological movement around the world today uh, to bring us together as one, to act in community, and to resolve our conflicts and move forward as one human family. So that's a little bit of the the background and the meaning of the whole movement. Well, that's, it's beautiful, especially uh, the coming together of science and spirit, which is so important these days. I know that the whole movement feels like a spiritual impulse to all of us in this time of, of um, terrible division on our planet. And so when you speak about on our inherent unbroken wholeness and the the vast web of unbounded flowing oneness this is uh this is what can inspire us to really come together as one humanity on this planet trying to make things better for everyone and all who all life so uh this is a wonderful impulse and i know that you've explained this at greater depth in uh, the book that came out uh, last year, right? When, when, when did the Holo movement embracing our collective purpose to unite humanity, when did that come? When was that published? Yes, we published an anthology, which has happened to have a copy of it right <laughs> here. Coincidentally, synchronistically enough, the Holo movement embracing our collective purpose to unite humanity. And that was published last year and launched uh, in conjunction with igniting the whole movement in Sedona. So both uh, that right. conference- Right, that's right. We saw it there for the first time. March 23rd, 2023, <laughs> a very significant date. And as you so uh, accurate, accurately described, Deborah, uh, it really starts with a meeting, uh, a meeting of science and spirit. You know, there are so many divisions in our society today but I think the most fundamental really is the disconnect between materialistic science and 
consciousness and spirituality. Mm. And if all is one, uh, those two have to find their common ground first. And that's what David Bohm was really um, very preoccupied with. And so uh, the, the implicate is spirit and the explicate is um, materialism, but uh, they're all from the same source and they're woven together through this movement, this ongoing flow of the whole movement. And uh, we were blessed by over 50 collaborators and contributors to the whole of movement book. So it's, uh, it's a deep dive into the wave flow of the whole movement and uh, contributions from, from many authors and thinkers from around the world. And we're very honored to have uh, had so many uh, legendary and wise people contribute to the whole movement book. I'm going to come in for a moment and just say it is a wonderful book. I was really proud and happy when I got it in Sedona last year. And people can get it um, easily by going to Amazon. And again, if you just go to Amazon, put into the uh, search bar, Holo Movement, it'll show up easily for you. And of course, we're putting this link into the chat box for our Zoom room audience. Thank you, Scott. And I might add that uh, the Spanish edition of the book should be coming out later this summer. So we're excited about that, especially being here in Spain, where we had our recent Holo Movement Wave conference. So our, our Spanish speakers will soon have the Holo Movement book uh, to read as well in Spanish. And your translator was there, and he is a, a friend and student of Desiree and J.J. Hurtak, who have been on this program many times, and like all of you, are members of the Evolutionary Leaders Circle. So everyone's coming together for this. And I want to just say a note about the name, the Holo Movement. Because some people hear that name and they think, oh, I don't know, am I going to be able to remember that? Does that come from physics? You know, but I've been thinking the word holistic entered our vocabulary in the last part of the previous century. And it's now a word everybody speaks. And that is the same wholeness that is um, inherent in the name holo movement. So I want everybody to remember it that way, pronounce it correctly, and you say whole, holo movement. Holo movement as in whole, and indeed, you're absolutely right. It's a move, holistic movement, and one fairly simple, actually easy word to remember that it describes the movement of the whole. So you got it, Deborah. Thank you. Mm, and many of us, including this global peace tribe that's the audience here, have been yearning for a movement of movements for a long time, and it's time now. So uh, the Holo Movement has had some events to bring people on board and get everybody uh, thinking together and visioning and dreaming together. And uh, this year's event on the beautiful island of Ibiza uh, was was produced by the team that you put together since the previous event. And um, I'm excited that we're going to have some members of the team later on in the show this evening. But I'd like to ask Laura Rose, uh, who was one of the organizers, and I remember in Sedona how how, Laura, you inspired us all. We all wanted to go to a visa the next year. And that dream uh, just came true. So please tell us what the purpose of that gathering was and who attended and get, just give us a feel for what happened there. Hmm. Well, for, thank you so much, Scott, for having me and Demandlin on the program. And Deborah, what a treat to get to see you so <laughs> soon after celebrating this extraordinary, really what I consider a seminal event in Ibiza. It brought together over 200 people, uh, which is just, you know, mind blowing. We It was sold out. And then we had people that we sort of shoehorned in uh, <laughs> that just kept appearing. And everybody who attended seemed to have come for some, they got some message, some download that they needed to be there. And throughout, people kept telling us, 
I just had this feeling I needed to be here. And now that I am, I understand why. And people were so lit up and so extraordinarily uh, just high on the experience. And mm-hmm. so this started, um, in some ways, uh, this started with Manuel's and my journey well over 30 years ago. Um, we decided to combine our, our passion for bringing the planet together uh, through cultural exchange um, in uh, the early 90s. And we started to bring, we've facilitated through Greenheart over 170,000 experiences for uh, people from 85 countries around the world. And then went on to do that with Foundation for the Future and uh, exposing children through the Foundation for the Future to sustainability and um, purpose all over Spain, bringing kids to an environmental center on the island called Casita Verde that we supported for years. We started a spiritual center on the island in 1997. Uh, We um, introduced something called the Green Heart Guide to Living in the early 2000s on the island. Uh, We also were very involved uh, with some some other experiences on the island, like the Spirit Festival, which we launched in 2014, uh, and then passed the torch to Jerry Brownstein to carry on the good work. So over the years, we've had a lot of um, experience of doing different things and and also with Purpose Earth, um, which funds and grant and mentorship mentorship programs for grassroots communities around the globe. So this seemed like the perfect place to carry on from, from last year's experience with igniting the whole movement, which was enormously successful. And Scott joined us and about 80 other people and Source of Synergy, of course, was very involved with that. And also, thank you very kindly, helped us to organize this event in Ibiza. So um, our vision for this was to bring together extraordinary people doing amazing things. And so each morning we had what we called a stream, uh, which were sort of breakout sessions that people could each day choose a different one. We had Love and Action, which was uh, sponsored by and facilitated by Dr. Marty Casey, who's frequently appeared on the program, and another extraordinary woman named Scarlett Lewis, who um, tragically was motivated to create the Choose Love movement through the loss of her um, six-year-old son at Sandy Hook many years ago. And he's been speaking to her through many messages over the last 10 years and encouraged her to um, carry out this beautiful work. So that was one of the streams about bringing love into all of, changing every negative thought into a loving one. And uh, we also had a beautiful one called Conscious Flourishing with Shamani Jane and uh, the founder of Conscious Healing Initiative and also with Dr. Cassie Beaton, who was the former CEO of Institute of Noetic Sciences and the lead scientist there. Um, We also had another one called Exponential Collaboration, which was about bringing, about collaborating on the highest level possible, which is really what the event was about, was that ability to help us all bring together our very best selves and to not lose ourselves, um, but to break down the silos of the extraordinary work that we're all doing and to partner together to create something extraordinary. And uh, the last stream was called um, Evolutionary Technology and New Economies and had a huge variety of people, but was primarily led by Zenka Caro, who probably is, I think you've had her on the program. In fact, I think you did a program about the whole movement and filmed it from her house last year, Deborah. So uh, she's there. Zenka yeah. is on the show tonight. tonight. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, well, we're pre-recording, so I don't get to share all of that, because by the time the show is is actually aired, um, hopefully I'll be asleep. <laughs> um, but so that was part of it. And then we had just beautiful time for movement, for somatic experiences, uh, yoga on the lawn. Uh, the hotel was overlooking a, a, a beautiful view of Formentera, um, which was just magical setting. And then we had, we used a a lovely auditorium that was in walking distance of the hotel. 
And there we had over 175 people for two different evenings of events that included people like um, Gopi Kalayil, who is the global strategist for Google's AI. And uh, we had Mark Buckley, who's the author of the UN Manifesto for the Sustainable um, Development Goals. And, um, Deb, and Lynn McTaggart was there uh, doing her intention experiment. It was amazing. And then um, one evening, which was sort of the piece de resistance, if you will, we had a fantastic just kick-ass party at Juntos Farm, which is a regenerative agricultural center in the middle of the island. And I will forward you some really great um, footage of that <laughs> so that you can share that, Scott. But um, I think that's where we all let down our hair and just, you know, dance to drummers. And we had Gary Mulk in there and he was harmonizing with Amakela Gaston. And <laughs> wow, the energy was palpable. It was just extraordinary. So... Um, I think so, we all left with um, a lot of joy in our hearts. Yeah. So you can see that the formula of bringing together extraordinary people who are doing amazing things uh, really works. Uh, that's that's probably a good as good a definition as any of the building blocks to the whole movement is all the people who ha who are doing incredible projects to to build a creative new future and don't necessarily know each other and don't have any way to connect. So um, that was really beautiful. And I know, uh, Laura, that uh, you would like to tell us about some miracles that occurred during this gathering together. You know, Deborah, I, I think there were so many extraordinary things that happened. There was so much magic in the air that it was palpable throughout. Um, and I certainly, Len McTaggart's uh, intention experiment, the first, um, the first night at the auditorium with the 175 people there was uh, one of the most powerful sort of catalysts for everything that occurred afterwards as well. But she had the whole group, all of us in that auditorium, break into her groups of eight, which she calls the power of eight. And so we each chose somebody in the circle. So there were, you know, like, what, um, dozens of groups there. And uh, one of them was this beautiful French woman named Amentine. And she was the, she was selected by her group. And she came on crutches. She's been on crutches for eight months she broke her ankle in seven different places and has been in excruciating pain since. And she's this beautiful soul. She's absolutely radiant in every way. And yet um, she told me that she barely got it. We had to kind of go over a pedestrian bridge over the highway to arrive. And she said she could barely make that trip. Um, and she was in so much pain. So we got together and we did the work of, of Len and she sets the tone. She told us extraordinary stories of her past experiences with this. And each, and so Amadine was in the middle of a group and everybody was generating their love and all of their healing energy to her for about, I don't know, maybe eight minutes, Deborah. What do you think? Something I like that. I think it was only six. Maybe it was six. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long. And honestly, you could feel the whole room was generating this pulsating love throughout. So imagine all of these groups of eight all over this auditorium, all of us sending love to the, the person within our circle. And at the end, Amadine raised her hand, stood up, put her crutches aside and went dancing across the front of the auditorium and has since then texted me every day to say she's still off of her crutches. Oh, she didn't sit at the airport. And it's the first time that she's been pain-free since this terrible accident that occurred almost a year ago. And um, and then that was just one of many stories of people that were there, that uh, there was Ursula, who was Ingmar's girlfriend, whose hand, she had fallen on her hand and it was really hurting and that was cured. And Jeff Parrott's um, arthritis was cured. And and then I think the most extraordinary story of all is that. And wait, our, wait, because oh, we are going to be hearing tonight from Dr. Marty K. Casey, 
who also had a miracle healing during that same intention experiment. Oh. And she is still posting about it on Facebook. So oh my I know gosh. she's okay. going to want to tell us about it. Okay. Well, I'm not going to tell her story. I promise. <laughs> I don't know it. Um, but I will tell just one more because I think, I think this is the most extraordinary of all. Um, for those of you who are familiar with her, Maureen Edwardson is, um, extraordinary light being and healer and uses inner resonance technology to um, take people to the next level of skipping over all the steps that people normally go through with trauma healing and just be there, right? So um, Emmanuel and I have had the privilege of knowing and working with her for the last couple of years, and we invited her to join us in Ibiza. And I noticed um, the first, I had never met her in person, and yet I noticed, and Emmanuel told me he did too, that that when I when I met her, I I felt that there was something a little different about her energy. And it wasn't quite what I knew from all of our Zoom meetings and things. And um, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And so the night that we went to Junto's farm, um, you know, we go out to this beautiful setting in the middle of the countryside and in on the island of Ibiza and we're all dancing and praying and singing and eating locally sourced food and having this amazing time together. And um, and I didn't learn this until I got back to the hotel, but as she was going up the path to go back to get on one of the shuttles to take them back, um, she fell and she was caught and she was embraced by a lot of healing energy and people were escorting her. But when I got to the hotel, she was being loaded onto an ambulance. And two of my dear friends took her to the local hospital and she was diagnosed with having had a heart attack and having blockage in two major arteries of 100% in one and 70% in the other. And um, so we've been, you know, this so whole, uh, you know, legion of angels that have been with us. We've all been taking turns, going to the hospital, checking up on her. She had a stent put in uh, the artery that was 100% blocked, and they told her that she needed the other another stent before they could even consider letting her fly. So, um, so Emmanuel and I were back at the hospital with her yesterday and bringing her goodies and things. And she was saying, "Tomorrow is my my um, procedure, and I'm going in for um, an angioplast, and then they will go ahead and put the stent in this morning." So this is right now, this morning. So. She gives me a call about two hours later and says, the doctors went in. Now, mind you, before this, we had done a circle of healers for her. This was after Lynn McTaggart with a hundred of us in a circle on the lawn of, of the hotel. And then another, all, the, all kinds of other healings were going on. So she goes in to the doctors this morning. They do the angioplast and they told, they pulled it out and they said, you don't need a stent. Your veins are and arteries are completely clear, 100% clear. And they discharged her today. Amazing. They discharged her. And I just, I just took her to a little apartment, got her all set up with food. And um, we'll be putting her on a plane in a couple of days. And she's fine. She's wow. I love hearing that. I'm going to bring up her picture real quickly. Um, and our audience knows her. Maureen has been on the okay. show many times. And she's one of those people that when she's not on as a guest, she's in the Zoom room audience commenting. And so this is our beloved Maureen. Um, and that's an amazing story, Laura. Thank you for giving us this wonderful update. <laughs> and, you know, the most the most beautiful thing, too, was in the hospital. She was healing everybody in the hospital she was working with the patient in the room with her all of the all of the staff was coming in and saying oh i've read about irt <laughs> and your website so yeah wow you know, it, it makes you wonder if on some level she had that experience to get her into the hospital where she was able to provide support to some of the people there i mean life yeah. god works in mysterious ways right Absolutely. And and it, she also said, you know, if this had happened to me anywhere else, like if she, you know, she lives alone. Mm -hmm. And so if she had been at home alone, 
um, instead of with this whole, you know, fleet of, of angels. Um, I think, you know, it was the perfect place for her to be. So, hmm. yeah. We are all learning that nothing is impossible. All of the barriers that we think we have to manifesting the reality that we choose uh, are in our minds, in our psyches, in our culture, and not quantum reality, which we're just getting acquainted with. So uh, there's certainly so much that's possible through the Holo movement. So maybe, um, Emmanuel, you can uh, give us a sense of how you feel going forward from the Ibiza wave and what you, uh, Chief Visioneer, have uh, in your vision and and the vision of the extraordinary team of gifted people that you've put together to help manifest it. Well, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, as you mentioned, the, the event here in Ibiza was called the Holo Movement Wave. And indeed it is a wave. And when the uh, implicate order arose to create what is today our universe, it came about from a, an original vibration that caused a wave. So all of reality as we know it is a wave, and it's made up of potential wave patterns within it, uh, thus the choice of that term for the wave. And the wave keeps flowing. And I think we uh, were so grateful to so many people, as Laura said, over 200 uh, attended in one aspect or another, many of them from all parts of the world uh, and uh, 15 countries coming so far to convene together in Ibiza to uh, ride the wave. And I think uh, they're all valiant surfers and grab their boards and let's, uh, <laughs> let's sail forward here to see what we can do. So we're really inspired here by the momentum of the wave. And of course, what we really want to do is create community, uh, encourage people to take on uh, action-oriented projects. Uh, the whole movement is all about action. Uh, the quantum formula that drives this forward is uh, based on action, and that's our download from the conscious source to the explicate order, and it all happens through taking action. And of course, uh, anything we're doing now to uh, resolve the issues facing us today comes through action. So we're encouraging everyone, pick a project, an idea, something that they can really hands-on, uh, do something about, work together with like-minded friends in a small group called the Holon, uh, which is both a, particle and the whole simultaneously. And that's what we all are. Each of us are individuals, but we're all part of the whole. And our small community holons uh, are the same. And uh, you can join the whole movement as a holon, take action, move forward, ride the wave into the future. And we're gonna keep the wave flowing and gaining momentum and more people all the time. Uh, joining in all the way through the the coming year when we'll be providing uh, more and more support and programs for our whole ons uh, uh, right up till this time next year for our next uh, whole movement of wave uh, coming up in North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina, a year from right now. So ride the wave with us and uh, let's catch a big one and ride it safely to a sandy shore. Thank you so much. And um, we will, we're going to be talking to Danette Wolpert in a little bit. She's going to show us how people can join the Holons, how we can go to the Facebook page. And I definitely, good Lord Granny, will be there in Asheville, North Carolina, because as fate would have it, two of my closest friends own a retreat site in Asheville. Um, and so it's a place that I go to usually once a year anyway. So... Hey. That's that's going to be really exciting for many of us to gather in Asheville. Awesome. We'll see you there, Scott, if not sooner. Hopefully sooner. Hopefully sooner. Thank you both so much for shepherding this uh, very important project. And this really is where so many of the leaders of different organizations are coming together. Um, and so God bless you both. And uh, Rev. Yeah. Devin, 
Laura, do you have a closing word there? I just was going to ask you, are your friends Vinit and Jeff Janan by any chance? Vinit and Raggio. Oh, okay. So, yeah. and Jeff Janan now has a retreat center there as well. Right, right. Yeah, no, I my friends have three friends, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Vinit and Raggio have Samasati Retreat Center. And yeah. uh, so definitely we'll want to have a lot of our people probably staying there. Um, uh, in fact, I already... As soon as I get the dates from you of when it's going to be, <laughs> I'm going to ask them to reserve it. So I got it right here. May yes. 23th to June 2nd. Okay. May well, I hope you have room for a lot of people there because uh, we, we've called this program tonight, Catch the Wave. So I'm sure there will be a lot, a lot of more people who are members of the Global Peace Tribe who will want to join us. Absolutely, absolutely. And this would be a good opportunity for a lot of our East Coasters that weren't <laughs> able to make it to our retreat in Sedona or Los Angeles. So we'll really kind of make this a, an East Coast opportunity. Um, I know Kristen will come down from uh, New York. So this will this will be wonderful. <laughs> God bless you. Thank oh, you so thank much you so for much. your time. Deborah, what fun to hang out with you. That was really yes. nice. I think I got to spend more time with you here than I did at the event. So that was great. All right. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, let's all catch the wave together and carry that <laughs> momentum forward, find solutions and, uh, and enjoy it in the process. A big theme of the wave mm -hmm. is joy. Uh, let's be happy. Let's work and bring that blessing to the whole world. Thank you.